Shabbat Shalom, Boker Tov, Otpam. Shabbat Shalom, and good morning again. Kafi Shamar Nukvar Yotermi Pamechat, Zeha Boker Shela Giborim. As we've said uh, more than once, that this is the morning of the heroes. Venirasha Aketa Zehu Ahi Giborim. And it looks like this section right here is full of the most heroes. Because <laughs> it's the most full in the room. All the rest of the sections are so-so. <laughs> but everyone has come before the Lord. And everybody who's with us online through the different uh, devices. We're all united in the same spirit. Because we want to follow that same spirit. And today we're going to continue learning something that that Holy Spirit has given us. We're going to continue our study of 1 John. And we're turning to the third chapter today. Before we turn to the word of the Lord, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we come before you as your little children. Lord, we do want you to work in each and every one of our hearts. And we ask that you would give us everything that we need so much this morning. Give us your spirit, Lord. Stir up in us all the gifts that are needed in order for us to understand what the Spirit is saying to us. We ask that you would work in every single person's heart. So that we would leave this place different than when we came. That we would leave this place more similar to you, Lord. In the name of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen. כמו שאני אמרתי, אנחנו ממשיכים בלימוד שלנו של איגרת יוחנן הראשונה. As I said, we're continuing our study of 1 John. ובשבוע שעבר, כל אחד ששמע או לא, או היה פה או לא היה, אבל כן שמע. So everybody who heard the last week's message. אתם שמעתם את מסר של רועי קהילה פיטר. You heard the, the message from Pastor Peter. שדיבר על רוח צורר המשיח ש... באמת הפעולה שלה נרחבת בעולם המודרני שלנו. We talked about the spirit of anti-Messiah whose, whose work is so broad in our world. ואלה הם הימים שאנחנו חיים בהם. And those are the days that we're living in now. אבל תודה לאל שבימים האלה יש עוד משהו שפועל. But praise God that in this time there's something else that it's at work. תודה לאל שיש לנו עדות לא רק פעולת רוח צורר המשיח. Praise God that we have a testimony not just of the work of the anti-Messiah. אלא שכיותר ויותר אנחנו מתקדמים. But as we are drawing closer and closer. מתקדמים לקראת סוף החיים כפי שאנחנו מכירים אותם סוף ה... העולם הזה, drawing closer to the end of this life as we know it, or the end of this age, מה שאנחנו קוראים לו אחרית הימים זה התקופה שאנחנו חיים בה, or the last days is this period that we're in, אנחנו יכולים לדעת מהכתובים שכל הבריאה באמת היא זועקת לאלוהים. We know that all of creation is crying out for God. בכיסופים כל הבריאה מחכה למשהו אחר. It's in, with an earnest expectation, all creation is crying out. When people are around us are looking, whether they know it or not, the, the Spirit causes them to desire something more. והם רוצים לראות התגלות של בנים של אלוהים. And they want to see the revealing of the sons of God. ואם אנחנו נפנה יחד איתכם לאיגרת אל הרומים, If we would turn together to Romans, בפרק ח' של איגרת אל הרומים מפסוק 19, In Romans 8 uh, from verse 19, אנחנו רואים איך שליח שאול בהסתכלו קדימה, We see how the apostle Paul, as he was looking forward, כאשר הוא מסתכל לאחרית הימים ההם, 
when he looked into these last days, those days that we're living in now, and the days that he was living in then, he says, for the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. That those people who the Spirit of God is living in them. Those same people that the Spirit cries out from within them and then says, Abba, Father. And everyone who has the name of a son or a daughter of God can not only say, Abba, Father, but can also say, say that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And when we look at the work of the anti-Messiah, we need to be strengthened in that knowledge that we as the children of God can say that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And we are not afraid of the work of the anti but we are moving forward into the calling that God has given each one of us. And when, when uh, the uh, Apostle John finished the second chapter, he didn't write it as chapter. He just wrote it as one letter. But when he ended that topic about the anti Messiah, he says, then those, those uh, children, he says, those who were born of God, those who can stand in him, they need to stand against that spirit. In, in uh, chapter 2, verse 28, he says, He says, so that when he appears, talking about the Messiah coming, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And then the Apostle John starts talking about these children of God. And so let's read the first two verses of 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Behold, what manner of love this is. When uh, the apostle uh, John talks about this topic of the children of God, he starts by drawing our attention to the love of God. Because we are sons and daughters of God, not because of us. We are sons and daughters of God because of him, because of his great love. This, uh, this word that is uh, translated as what manner, it's a very rare word in the New Testament. And basically it's saying in, in Greek, it's, it's this uh, sense of awe. 
when you didn't expect something and then it was revealed to you. Something you can say wow about. And it's even beyond wow when we're talking about the love of God. I think you could say, wow, that's the bomb. Uh, <laughs> the is what an amazing thing. It's something great. But basically, John is saying, when I look at the love of God, that because of it, I can be a child of God, I'm just amazed by it. It's something above and beyond. It's something that amazes me. It's something I can't even describe in words. It's something that I can just stand before with my jaw open. Open. Wow, I don't have words. I don't have words for this amazing love that God has for us. God loves us with a love that our words can't describe. And it's not just a love that God has or acts in just every once in a while. It's agape love which is part of God's nature. It's the, the love that through it, God chose to draw us to himself. It was his choice to take us from this world, to take us from the world of, of, of sin and darkness, to, to redeem us from being children of Satan, and to receive us as children of God. And I think that everybody here loves something or, or some, somebody. Husbands can definitely say they love their wives. Wives will say they love their, their husbands. We have uh, children, parents. We have uh, friends. We, we know what loving something or somebody is. Or somebody. But in order to understand God's love toward us, we need to understand that between us and God, there is this huge chasm. When, when I love my wife, I love her as a person. A person who loves a person. But when God loves us, he loves us in spite of and beyond that chasm that is in between us. Uh, so a few days ago, my wife and I went to downtown and went into a store. And in the store, we bought a few things we needed. And, and beyond the fact that they were 70% off, uh, we just needed to buy a few things. And why do we need to buy them? And I think this is something we all do every once in a while. Because the things that we had just, uh, the, uh, the plates that we had just uh, were broken. Uh, just a normal thing, you take a plate at home and then it breaks. And it really hurts when your favorite plate gets broken. And I think it's even worse when your favorite coffee cup gets broken. 
ולשתות כוס קפה מהכוס האהוב שלי. Because now you can't get up in the morning and drink from your favorite cup. והיא נשברה הכוס הזו. And so that cup was broken. ועכשיו תגידו לי, כמה מכם אתם לוקחים את השברים האלה? And so how many of you take all of those broken pieces? ומתחילים להדביק אותם חזרה. And start to glue them back together. אוקיי, okay, בינתיים אני רואה רק בן אדם אחד. <laughs> Meanwhile, I only see one person. <laughs> אבל, אבל מדביקים אותם חזרה כדי להשתמש, כדי להנות. So you, you, you glue them back together so you can enjoy from it, from it again. Uh, I'll confess I don't do that. If my cup breaks, I take the broom, sweep it together, עובר עוד פעם עם שואב אבק, עם כל הרסיסים הקטנים. Go over it again with the vacuum. ובמקרה הטוב אני הולך לחפש את אותו כוס שהיה לי, אותה כוס שהייתה לי. And the best case scenario is that I would find the same cup again in the source. אבל ככה sword. לא עם אלוהים כלפינו. But that's not what God does toward us. כי אלוהים כן קורא לנו כוסות חרסינה. Because God does call us uh, cups or vessels. We, we, we are earthen vessels in God's hand. And we're not only earthen vessels in God's hand. We are broken earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels with, with cracks in a lot of places. And we are earthen vessels that without what God gives us life, we, we wouldn't be able to exist. And when God looks at us in His love, when he sees that we've been broken, he sees that we're just this pile of little pieces. He doesn't take his heavenly broom, but he takes all of those pieces together and puts them back together. Puts them back together through his own death. Through the blood that Yeshua the Messiah poured out for us. The creator who died for those broken pieces that, that he himself had created. For those broken pieces that he himself had created. And so when John describes the love of God, he says there's no greater love than he who gives his life for his friends. That's the love that God gave us in his son, Yeshua Messiah. And so when, when John is looking and describing this love of God, he, he stands in awe. How can it be? How could it be that the creator of the world came down to us to take the, the broken pieces of our lives and purchased us by his blood? I don't know about you, but I, I couldn't uh, think about going and dying for my broken cup. But, but that's the kind of chasm that there is between, between God and his creation. That's the kind of chasm that there is between God and us. But in spite of that, God came down and died for each one of us. To give us that perfect love that we have in Yeshua the Messiah. In 1 John chapter 4, he says in verse 9, בזאת נגליתה אהבת האלוהים בנו, בעובדה שאלוהים שלח את בנו יחידו לעולם למען נחיה בזכותו. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. פסוק עשר, בזאת הייתה האהבה. לא שאנחנו אהבנו את האלוהים, אלא שהוא אהב אותנו, ושלח את בנו להיות כפרה על חטאינו. Verse 10, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 
we did not purchase this right. We received this right to be the children of God. And that right was purchased at a very heavy price. The price of the sacrifice of Yeshua the Messiah. That he did in spite of our rebellion. John writes, we were not searching for him. We, we, we didn't want him. When I look back at my life before God redeemed me, I can confess that my searches were, were in the opposite direction of finding God. I would get up in the morning and think about what can I do for me, for my own good. And at that same time, God was looking down from heaven and thinking about what he could do for this earthen vessel that was broken. Behold, what manner of love the Father has for us. A love that is above all. Above anything that we could ever imagine. And everyone who receives that love becomes a child of God. And not only that, he says that in this world we are children of God. And chapter 3, verse 2, but what waits for us, it's even greater than being a child of God in this world. Imagine if we say wow to the love that God gave us here, what is waiting for us in heaven when we will see him face to face? And when we look at that love, when we see how precious it is, when we think what an amazing gift we've received to be the children of God, uh, John doesn't uh, leave us without responsibility. It's not just that we have received this, this privilege to be called the children of God now. And so now we can just sit down on the sofa and enjoy it. John says, no, now we have a responsibility. Let's read the next verses from verse 3 in 1 John 3. In verse 3, John says, And everyone who has this hope in him, in other words, this hope that we will see him face to face. If that hope lives in you and, we call, and you call yourself a child of God, what's our responsibility? Everyone like that purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not keep on sinning. Whoever keeps on sinning has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who keeps on sinning is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not make a practice of sinning, for his seed remains in him. 
ומה שאנחנו רואים בפסוקים האלה זה שיוחנן אומר, קודם כל, אם יש לנו ציפייה לפגוש את אלוהים, so is, all, says, God, אנחנו, ילדי אלוהים, צריכים לטהר את עצמנו. ואז, אם אנחנו קוראים את, סוף, כאילו, את הקטע הזה עד הסוף, end, זה יכול קצת לבלבל, האמת. It, it bit, כי מצד אחד הוא אומר שאנחנו צריכים להיטהר מהחטאים שלנו, hand he says we need to be cleansed from our sin but on the other hand he says that those who are born of God won't sin do we see here that the scriptures contradict themselves and I think if we believe that the scriptures were given by God we can say here there is no contradiction there, there are no things that come against other things in the scriptures and in order to understand what John is saying here about our walk with God, we need to go deeper into the nature of man. Who are we as people? And I would divide it into two parts. I think every ch- a child of God can divide their life into two parts. The first part before we were saved. And the second part after we were saved. So who we were we before God saved us? לפני שאנחנו נושענו, אנחנו היינו עבדים לחטא. We we מה זאת אומרת להיות עבדים לחטא? להיות עבד זה אומר שאתה לא יכול להתנהג, להתנגד ל- ל- לסמכות של הבעל שלך, של הבעלים שלך. זה אומר שאתה, שאתה נמצא בידיים של הבעלים שלך, master, וכל מה שהבעלים שלך אומרים, and everything that the master says, that's what you have to do. Uh, the Apostle Paul in Romans 6, he says it exactly in those words. He says in Romans 6 verse 17 that you were slaves of sin, talking about before you were saved. And again, when I look at my life before I was saved, if I was caught in some uh, kind of idea toward, toward sin, I didn't even have the power to come against it. That's what sin does in the, in the life of a non-believer. It just controls the life of a non-believer. And in Ephesians 2 verse 1, Paul says, that not only were we slaves to sin, he says that we were slaves who were dead to our, in our sins. In Ephesians 2 verse 1, he says, you who were dead in trespasses and sins. So all that we had was that sinful nature. We didn't have the, the spirit of God or the, our, our spirit that God raised. So we only continued to exist by the grace of God. This amazing grace that God, God has, uh, amazing uh, um, patience toward us. And as the, the Apostle Peter says, that he is long-suffering toward us. Because he, his, his will is not for anyone to perish, but that they would all come to repentance. And, and because of God's great love toward people, he continues working in, in non-believers' lives. 
אותם, לתת להם חיים. He, he continues to sustain them, giving them life. והוא ממשיך להביא אותם, למשוך אותם, לקרוא אותם לנקודה הזו שהם ידעו אותו. And he continues to call them and to draw them and to the point where they would know him. וכאשר אנחנו מקבלים אותו, and when we receive him, הוא מק, מקיים אותנו, הוא מקים אותנו, סליחה, מהמתים. He, he raises us up from the dead. כאשר שליח שאול ממשיך באיגרת על האפסים 2, אנחנו קראנו שהיינו מתים בפשענו. So in the first part of Ephesians 2, Paul said that we were dead in our, our trespasses. אבל פה בפסוק 5 באל האפסים 2, But then in verse 5 of Ephesians 2, הוא אומר, אף כי מתים היינו בפשענו, החיינו עם המשיח, הן בחסד נושעתם. He says, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Messiah. By grace you have been saved. Verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua. כדי להראות בעולמים הבאים את שפע עושר חסדו בטובה שגמל עלינו במשיח ישוע. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Messiah Yeshua. שלנו, so if up until the point of our salvation, שלנו, all that we had was our sinful nature, suddenly God brings something new into our life. He raises our spirit to life that was dead. He gives us the ability to hear him and to follow him. He gives us that same power that we talked about earlier. That through that spirit we can say that the one in the world is, is weaker than the one who is in us. And he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. האיור הזה ש, שאני עומד להגיד לכם, אם זה מהווה את זה באמת בצורה מיטבית. אבל זה כמו לקחת סירה פשוטה של עץ. But it's, it's like taking a, a little uh, wooden boat. Just, just something pretty small and simple. Because we're not all that big in this world. A, a boat that all that it has is just its body. That doesn't even have sails. And putting an engine on it. <laughs> and then putting a, a, a good the steering wheel and then giving that uh, sailor a map and if beforehand we were sitting in that boat and just pushed around by different winds and, and the waves and just wherever the winds and waves of this world pushed that's where we went to now suddenly we've received power now we can turn on the engine and we can go against the, the spirit of this world or the wind of this world we don't need to, need to just flow, go with the flow. We can go against the flow of this world. And that's what happens to a believer when he receives Yeshua. He receives that power to go in the opposite direction. But now the question, have we gotten rid of the boat itself? No. No. והתשובה היא מאוד פשוטה, אולי קצת מאכזבת. And maybe that answer is a little bit disappointing. אבל אותו, אותו טבע הבשרי שלנו, אותו טבע החוטא שלנו, עדיין נשאר איתנו. That, that flesh or that sinful nature is still, still with us. הישועה שלנו נותנת לנו להיות בריאה חדשה. Our uh, salvation allows us to be a new creation. And when the scriptures say that we are a new creation in the Messiah, we need to say yes and amen. 
אלא שהבריאה החדשה הזו היא עדיין נמצאת באותו כלי חרסין הישן. But that new creation still exists within that, that old uh, uh, earthen vessel. ואנחנו עדיין ניתנים לפועלו של אותו טבע החוטא שלנו. And so we, we're still subject to the, the actions of that, that old uh, nature. Shaliyah Shaul, who Omer ba Yigaret al-Aromim Zayin 17. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, verse 17, Hu Omer, Mikan shelo ot ani, klomar ani hanolat mea Mashiach. He says, but now it is no longer I who do it, or talking about I who have been born in, in, again in Messiah. אז מכאן שלא עוד אני עושה את המעשה, כלומר חטא, אלא החטא השוכן בי. He says, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. שליח שאול, אחד מעמודי התווך של הקהילה, המאמין שאין בו ספק שהוא נושע, נכון? The Apostle Paul, one of the pillars of the congregation, who, who there's no doubt that he was saved, הוא מכריז ואומר, החטא עדיין פועל בי. He said, the sin is still working in me. הטבע החוטא הזה עדיין דוחף אותי לכיוונים הלא רצויים לי. That sinful nature still pushes me toward uh, directions that, that I don't want to go. לי שהנולד מהמשיח. I who have been born in Messiah. בשנייה אל הקורינטים י' שלוש, in uh, 2 Corinthians 10.3, שליח שאול עוד פעם, הוא אומר שאומנם חיים אנחנו בבשר ודם. He, he says, for though we walk in the flesh. במילים אחרות, אני עדיין חי בבשר הזה, החוטא, הישן שלי. In other words, I'm, I'm still living in this flesh, in this sinful nature. אבל בזכות שיש לי עכשיו את הרוח, but because I now have the spirit, אנו נלחמים כנגד בשר ודם. He says, we do not war according to the flesh. ואנחנו מנהלים המלחמה הזו לא בדרך של בשר ודם. So we are not fighting according to the flesh. עוד פעם. Again. בגלל שאנחנו נולדנו מחדש. Because we've been born again. זה לא אומר שאנחנו התפטרנו מהטבע החוטא שלנו. It doesn't mean that we've gotten rid of our sinful nature. ואם אנחנו חושבים ככה, אנחנו פשוט מטעים את עצמנו. And if we think so, then we're just deceiving ourselves. ויוחנן כן אומר שאנחנו צריכים להתפטר ולהיטהר מהחטא. And so John does say we need to be cleansed from our sins. ושליח שאול מאיגרת אל הגלטים, הוא אומר שזה חלק מהחיים שלנו. And the, the apostle Paul in Galatians says this is part of our life. ואל הגלטים חמש או... פרק פרק ה' פסוק 17, in Galatians 5:17, הוא אומר, כי הבשר מתאווה למה שבניגוד לרוח. He says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. והוא מדבר פה על חיי המאמין. And he's talking about the life of a believer here. והוא אומר שבחיים של המאמין, he says in the life of a believer, הבשר שלו, his flesh, הטבע, הבן אדם הישן שלו, the, his old nature, הוא עדיין מנסה לקום לתחייה סוג של. is still trying to rise again, you can say. הוא עדיין מנסה לקום ולהתנגד לפועל הרוח בחיים שלנו. he's still trying to rise up and, and fight against the, the, the spirit. והוא אומר שהרוח שאלוהים הקים בנו, and he says that the spirit that God has raised in us, is fighting against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. In other words, uh, the life of the believer is characterized by this ongoing fight. המאבק שמתנהל בין הטבע הישן שלנו לבין הטבע החדש שלנו. This struggle between our old nature and our new nature. Between... סליחה. בין בין כוח אותו מנוע שדוחף אותנו לכיוון האלוהים, between this, the power of this engine that is pushing us toward God, לבין חולשתו של אותה סירה שלא רוצה פשוט לנוע לשם. between the, this, the weakness of that boat that just doesn't want to go in that direction. והשאלה הכי חשובה, אני חושב, בעניין הזה למאמין, and I think the most important question in this context for believers, האם אנחנו מוכנים להפעיל את המנוע הזה למלוא הכוח שלו? Are we willing to turn this engine on in its full power? Are we willing to give God the steering wheel of our lives? Are we wanting to and willing to let the Holy Spirit lead us in our lives? Are we willing to give this new me who's been born of the Spirit to be the one who, who leads in this life and not, not the old me? And if we don't do it, 
אל תחשבו שהבשר יושב שם בנחת ולא יעשה שום דבר. Don't think that the flesh is just going to sit there on the side and not do anything. הבשר מיד תקפוץ אל ההגה. The, the flesh will immediately get up and take the wheel. ומיד... ינסה להדריך אותנו לכיוון החד בחיים שלנו. We'll ואני יכול להגיד לכם ש- שהמפתח, מפתח לחיים בניצחון במשיח, הוא בכך שאנחנו נלמד לחיות לפי הרוח. שאנחנו נלמד לחיות לפי כוח רוח הקודש שהוא נותן לנו. אם נעשה זאת, we'll that, אז הבן אדם החדש שלנו, כן, הנולד מאלוהים, then, then man, of, of שהוא God, לא רוצה וגם לא יכול לחתום, he, uh, sin, הוא יקבל את הניצחון בחיים שלנו. ולא ייתן לבן אדם הישן שלנו למשוך אותנו חזרה אל תוך החדר. ואז אנחנו פשוט יכולים ממש לדרוס על הנחש הארסי הזה של החטא ולהגיד יחד עם שליח שאול כמו שהוא אומר בראשונה רקולינטים 15 איה עקצך מוות איה עקצך מוות את הדברים האלה אנחנו נוכל להגיד רק אם אנחנו נהיה במשיח Those things we can say only if we are in Messiah. Only if we will abide in him as John encourages us to do. Because the sting of, of death is sin. But if we are living in Messiah and our new man is, is being strengthened in Messiah, if our new man is receiving power from the Holy Spirit, from the Word of God, from God's work in our lives, then what uh, John wrote a, a bit before the verses that we're talking about now, he says, then the blood of Messiah cleanses us from all sins. It doesn't mean that we as those who have been born in Messiah become sinners. We have a new name. בני אלוהים, אנשים הקדושים ומקודשים בדמו של משיח. אבל בדיוק בגלל שיש לנו את השמות היפים האלה והנכונים, אנחנו צריכים לצאת למלחמה ולצאת להתנגד לטבע החוטא שלנו. ולעשות את מה שיוחנן אומר בשלוש שלוש, בראשונה ליוחנן שלוש שלוש. כל מי שנסמך עליו בתקווה הזו, מטהר את עצמו כפי שטהור האחד ההוא. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. If we turn on that, that uh, engine in our old boat, and don't just leave it in a box in the corner of our home, then we can be people who have victory over the sin in our life. מכל עוולה שיש לנו בחיים. People who are being purified of all, all unrighteousness in our life. אנשים שדוחפים את החטא ולא נותנים לו להיכנס אפילו לחיים שלנו. People who push sin away and don't allow it into our life. הללויה. הללויה. הכוח שאלוהים נותן לנו. The power that God gives us. הזרע של אלוהים שיושב בנו. The seed of God that is in us. אתם זוכרים, יוחנן אומר שאנחנו לא חוטאים בגלל זרע אלוהים שנמצא בנו. You remember that John says that we don't sin because of the seed of God that is in us. ואני חושב שכל אחד מאיתנו ראה משהו. I think that every one of us has seen something. אנחנו ראינו את הניצוצים והפרחים, או אפילו דשא. שאיכשהו מוצא לו דרך, דרך האספלט. We, we, seen these uh, plants or, or, or uh, grass or, or uh, flowers that somehow find their way through asphalt. האם חשבתם עד כמה קשה האספלט? Have you ever thought about how hard asphalt is? ולמרות על כך, פרח קטן. But in spite of that, this little flower. 
יש לו כוח לחדור דרך ה... דרך ה... דרך הבטון והאספלט. תחשבו כמה כוח יש לזרע אלוהים בחיים שלנו. Think about how much power the seed of God has in our lives. If a natural seed can do that, then the seed of God can break through through our sinful nature and break all the strongholds that are in our lives and break off the opposition from our old nature. And, and blossom as, as like a, a mustard seed. If we just have a little faith to receive that seed, to allow God to work in our life, to allow God and His Spirit to change us, to teach us to, to walk with God. And then our fruit will be different. Not as the works of the flesh. But it will be the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. By heart. Okay. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. האם הוא גדול? אני מכיר את זה ברוסית, אני מצטער. אבל זה הפרי שאותו זרע יניב בחיים שלנו. But that's the fruit that that seed will produce in our lives. That's the fruit that we need to expect in our life and desire. אז אנחנו באמת נוכל להגיד שאנחנו חיים חופשיים. Then we can truly be free from those chains of, of slavery. And then we can say together with John, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that's exactly what I want to pray with you now. אני אבקש מכם פשוט להרכין, להרכין את, את ראשיכם. Just ask you to bow your heads. אם זה נוח לכם, אתם יכולים לעצום עיניים, אם לא, גם בסדר. If it's comfortable for you, you can close your eyes. If not, that's confined to you. איזו אהבה נתן לנו האלוהים. What manner of love the Father has given us. הללויה. 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 אבינו שבשמיים. Father in heaven. באמת, איזו מין אהבה זו שנתת לנו. Lord, what manner of love it is that you've given us. איזו מין אהבה זו שנתת לנו לשברי הכלים האלה ש, שעשית, אדוני. What a manner of love it is that you've given to us who are just broken pieces. אתה לא זרקת אותנו. You didn't throw us out. פשוט לא אספת אותנו וזרקת לפח זבל. You didn't just put up, pull us all together and throw us out trash. But you sent your only begotten son, Yeshua, so that by his blood we would become a new creation. And if now we are children of God, what else is awaiting us? What else is awaiting us when we will see him face to face? What great love this is, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray, God, for each one of us. ואני הראשון שרוצה לבקש ממך יותר מהאהבה שלך, ישו. לקבל יותר ויותר ממך, אדוני. Lord, to receive more and more of you. לקבל יותר ממך כדי שיהיה פחות ממני, אדוני. To receive more of you that there would be less of me. כדי שאותו אחד שאתה הקמת מן המתים בזכות דמך, so that that same one that you raised from the dead by your blood, שהוא יגדל ואני הישן יקטן. That, that, uh, that he would increase and I, I would decrease, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters. And I ask that you would give us revelation. Revelation of your great love. That isn't because of us, but is, it, but is in spite of us. 
אתה לקחת אותנו וקיבצת אותנו והפכת אותנו לילדים שלך. You gathered us together and turned us into your children. איזו מין אהבה זו. What amazing love. תגלה לנו את אהבתך, ישוע. Lord, reveal your love to us. הללויה. בואו נעמוד ביחד. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. אני חושב שזה יהיה פשוט ראוי להלל את האדון. I think that it would be just fitting to, to worship the Lord. להלל אותו כפי שהוא. To worship him as he is. להלל אותו על האהבה הגדולה שלו כלפינו. To worship him for his great love. להלל אותו כ- כאות תוד... הודיה שלנו. And to worship him as a sign of our thanksgiving. פשוט להגיד לו תודה על האהבה שהוא נתן לנו. To say thank you to him for the love that he's given us. וזכות האהבה הזו. עשה אותנו ילדים, בנים ובנות של אלוהים. אז בואו ניתן לאלוהים את הלבבות שלנו. אז בואו ניתן לאלוהים את הלבבות שלנו.